Hello there guys, welcome to another of my live videos. So, it is um, a couple of months now um, until uh, the January uh, transfer window um, and it is good uh, that Manchester United um, are making their plans uh, for uh, the January transfer window and obviously we are um, all um, aware that further um, more um, investment um, is needed um, in the squad and uh, we have uh, got um, a lot of uh, players um, on our um, agenda. So, if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, is to be Manchester United manager you know, by uh, January still, um, I think he's still um, you know keen on sticking to the policy um, of recruiting young British players you know like he did do um, earlier on um, in the summer but you know you can uh, still uh, see uh, the deficiencies um, in the squad you know that uh, do uh, need to be um, addressed I do definitely believe that Manchester United uh, do uh, need some depth in that midfield because uh, obviously that's one of the priority areas where Man United needs strengthening up I think also you know where uh, we do uh, need um, a striker because obviously you know we need a goal scorer you know we need some inspiration that I'm um, attacking uh, third um, in the pitch because like I did mention you know I think we know we look very exposed um, in that I'm um, attacking line you know, following the dismissal um, of Romelu Lukaku and Alexis Sanchez, plus due to it, the injuries of Rashford um, and Anthony Martial, and you know we haven't uh, scored um, enough uh, goals uh, so far uh, this season. You know, don't forget for the majority of the summer, you know, Man United uh, were um, in search uh, for the um, right winner. But I think the football club anywhere have assured that Solskjaer you know, will be uh, giving her uh, money you know uh, to spend um, in January. But you know, we did recommend you know three good players to the squad during the summer. You know, obviously you know we spent um, around nearly 150 million pounds on Daniel James. And Wan Bissaka and on Harry uh, Maguire, uh, and you know we have seen glimpses of what good signings uh, they've proven to be so far. So like I do keep mentioning, it was good that during the summer, you know, we did address you know some of the problematic areas. You know, we got that experienced centre half in. You know, we also got that right back in, but you know we didn't um, address um, all the problematic areas. But like I did say, you know, it was going to be extremely difficult for us, you know, to address um, all the problematic areas um, in one summer transfer uh, window. Um, but yeah. Definitely, you know, where further um, more um, investment um, is needed um, in the squad uh, without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. But, you know, despite um, our bad uh, start to the season, you know, there's still some, you know, Manchester United fans, you know, that are saying, you know, we should still give um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, time um, at the football club. Um, obviously, you know, you're getting the vast majority of Manchester United fans uh, that are demanding them um, out um, of the football club. And a lot of Manchester United fans do believe, you know, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, will be uh, gone uh, by uh, Christmas. Obviously, if this bad uh, run of form, you know, does uh, continue uh, to persist. But you're also getting a uh, certain uh, pundits, you know, saying that, you know, we should stick with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Uh, recently, right and Giggs has also come out and said, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does uh, need uh, more uh, time um, at the football club. You know, recently Rio Ferdinand came out as well and he says, you know, Manchester United, you know, would be naive uh, to sack um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So he believes, you know, we should, should uh, stick here with Solskjaer because maybe, you know, he does uh, need, um, you know, some more time with Solskjaer because obviously overall he has been at the club now for around... Um, 10 months, so he's nearly been at the club, you know, uh, just um, under um, a year, you know, he has been here since December of last year, obviously Solskjaer the first, you know, came in um, as the interim manager, obviously, you know, when he was interim manager, you know, Solskjaer, you know, did really, really well in that three-month period, you know, obviously the results were good, the performances were good, you know, he got the best um, out of these group of players and um, he exceeded their um, expectations, but, you know, since he got the job permanently in, ma in March, since he got the job permanently in March, you know, everything um, has just uh, seemed to have um, all uh, gone wrong, and some people say, you know, we need to give him at least a couple more transfer windows, you know, to see who else, of course, he can uh, recommend in uh, to the football club, because you can still quite frankly say Solskjaer is still in the process um, of rebuilding this Manchester United team, because obviously analysing the majority of this team, obviously it isn't Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's you know actually the majority of this team um, is Jose Mourinho's because don't forget Jose Mourinho you know did recommend um, 11 players into the football club and obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is still inheriting uh, the vast uh, majority um, of them but like I did mention to you yesterday you know I think in my own personal opinion, you know, I think Manchester United need at least five to six world class, you know, signings, you know, if we are to be back to being a competitive elite level football club and if, we, of course, uh, we are to be uh, future uh, title contenders. Um, it also did say that um, Oli, uh, Man United are prepared to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with eight new signings over the course of the next two summers. Of course, if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, is still to be a manager um, of Manchester United. Um, obviously, we do know that a lot of players have left since um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival and, you know, despite the fact that a lot of players players have left since his arrival, I still believe, you know, these are more problematic players at the football club and what I mean in that aspect is, you know, I think there is still players here, you know, that are not, no longer good enough, you know, to represent uh, Manchester United. But like I did say, and I will keep saying, you know, I do credit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in certain aspects and that, you know, he has got a lot of faith um, in his young upcoming players because the vast majority of the young upcoming players have been given their chances this season. Uh, like I said, you know, he did recommend three good players there to the squad during this summer, but I've also got quite a lot of element of concerns about him, you know, 
know, I don't think the board are going to stick with Solskjaer. I don't think his tenure is going to become uh, successful um, at Manchester United. Um, obviously, he hasn't got any intuition as a manager. And what I mean is, you know, he hasn't really got that managerial um, experience, you know, to the highest level. Obviously, before he came to Manchester United, Solskjaer, you know, he didn't win out. Uh, well, he was at Mould, sorry. Um, he won a couple of Norwegian titles at Mould. Obviously, you know, he had um, a really uh, short uh, tenure uh, with Cardiff. And he actually, you know, ended up, you know, uh, getting uh, relegated uh, with Cardiff, uh, did uh, Solskjaer. And I think, you know, he could do the same thing, you know, with Manchester United. You know, he could end up, you know, getting us relegated. Like I mentioned, I don't think Manchester United will get relegated because, you know, um, I think uh, the clubs are too uh, big, you know, there's obviously not too much uh, money um, and that um, into the football club. And like I mentioned last time, you know, we was relegated, uh, was back um, in 1974, which was obviously you not know, over 40 uh, odd uh, years ago now. Uh, but like I mentioned, you know, we are enjoying um, our worst start uh, to a Premier League season uh, for uh, three decades. So analysing it, it's our worst start to a season in Premier League history because the Premier League was found was named in what 92 uh, 1993 um, I think it uh, was uh, but we are sitting uh, just two points above the relegation at this present time so you can quite frankly say you know we are facing um, rele facing a relegation battle you know there's still um, a long way to go uh, you know there's around still around 30 uh, games left um, in the Premier League season so we can't uh, turn uh, things um, around uh, but you know I've got a stat to tell you since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got the job permanently you know we've only won five of our last 23 games um, you know competitions and this season with eight games in you know we've only won two games out of eight we've drawn three and we've lost three so in that aspect we've only registered nine points uh, uh, from uh, eight uh, league games and we know that's uh, nowhere near uh, good enough to our standards and like I did say reflect on the history of this football club also you know reflect on the amount of money that's being spent at the football club you know we should be um, in much more um, commanding a position you know than winning uh, now but like recently Gary Neville you know he um Gary Neville, you know, came out uh, the other week and, you know, he did uh, criticise uh, the Manchester United board and he thinks the vast majority of the blame does stem from the board, you know, with our um, inconsistency and I will agree with him on that aspect because I think the vast majority of the blame uh, does uh, stem from the board, you know, I think, obviously, you know, I think, you know, the blame stems from everybody, you know, so it is a mixture in that, but I think the vast majority of the blame stems from the board and I think, you know, the board have been a liability for several years now, I think, obviously, with the poor recruitment and, you know, the poor selection of managers, like I do keep mentioning, and obviously they didn't back um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer enough during the summer as they actually you know, did uh, presume um, so for me the board um, are to blame um, a lot I think you know obviously you've got a lot of Man United fans as well you know demanding um, Ed Woodward um, out um, of the football club um, because I think Ed Woodward's also a liability um, obviously you know some of the blame does stem from Solskjaer because obviously Solskjaer's tactics are questionable and I will ad I will admit you know Manchester United um, are very you know uh, tactically um, inept uh, so Solskjaer's got to take some responsibility and I do believe a lot of players um, have got to uh, take um, a lot of their uh, responsibility because the vast majority of them so far this season have obviously not underperformed so I think the vast majority of our players uh, do uh, need a um, morality check but like I mentioned you know I think everything you know needs to improve um, at Manchester United you know I think the results need to improve the performances need to improve you know I think we need to see structural changes at the football club so that needs to improve in that aspect um, I think you know we need to start scoring more goals like I mentioned we've only scored nine goals in eight Premier League games so far this season um i think also our away form needs to improve because you know we haven't we haven't won away from home you know since the psg game last season so i think it's now 11 away games that oligan and solskjaer has had now without um, a win um, at manchester united and he, he, he is aware of the you know the immense pressure you know that he is under at the football club um obviously you got recent reports coming out not too long ago saying if you know if we do uh suffer um, a heavier defeat to liverpool that could put oligan and solskjaer's job in serious jeopardy but i think it did recently say that oligan and solskjaer's job is safe at manchester united at least for the next uh, couple of games so that's uh being um, assured it did reveal how much it will cost the football club to sack him manchester united will have to pay around seven million pounds to get rid of um, oligan and solskjaer which i think is around half than what we paid to sack Jose Mourinho because I think we paid around £20 million pounds, uh, to uh, get rid of uh, Jose Mourinho but I think you know the only reason that you know the board are sticking with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, at the moment um, is because obviously you know he was a club legend and that like, you know he was a great player for Manchester United for 11 years he flourished um, under um, Alex Ferguson's guidance obviously Solskjaer made a total of 366 appearances for the football club in all competitions when he was a player and he scored 126 goals um, obviously one of his most iconic moments you know, came in 1999 of course when he did uh, win uh, the club the treble 
obviously you know that's uh, the club's uh, greatest um, achievement and that so he has got that proven uh, pedigree um, as a player but for me just you know he's not good enough you know to um, succeed um, as a manager and I think you know a, a mistake Manchester United did make was obviously you know giving Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the job you know I don't think we should have ever given him the job I, th and I, I do feel sorry for him in a way because I think you know the club have put him in um, you know um, a very very um, difficult uh, position you know um, if you do um, ask me um, The club have put him um, in a very, very um, difficult uh, position. But yeah, uh, you've got still the vast majority of Manchester United fans demanding him out. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of people believe us getting rid of him now, you know, wouldn't uh, solve um, a lot of their problems um, at the football club. But yeah, the Liverpool game next Sunday is obviously a very, very imperative game that Manchester United uh, do uh, need to uh, win. Um, obviously, we're going to be massive underdogs going into the game. Uh, but like I mentioned at the end of last season, and I think I said um, at, start, at the start of this season that our expectations this season, you know, probably will be to finish in that top four and perhaps uh, maybe uh, win uh, some silver. And obviously, you know, I said Solskjaer um, has got to um, exceed these expectations, you know, if he is to remain in the job at Manchester United. Because I did say, you know, we, want to, we need to get back into the Champions League. And this is why I don't think, I think this is also one of the main factor reasons why we didn't have a competitive summer transfer win because we failed to qualify for the Champions League. And when you're not in Champions League football, obviously, you know, it's going to be harder to attract uh, players uh, to the um, elite uh, level. Um, and obviously we, are, we was in for a lot of players you know during uh, the summer and I do believe you know in January you know we'll reignite our interest in some of them you know maybe we'll uh, leave uh, some um, until uh, next summer uh, but definitely you know we know we, you know we know a massive uh, rebuild um, is needed um, at the football club um, um, and yeah and um, so we'll now go into the players who I think Manchester United um, are going to go in for um, in January now, reportedly, there's been a lot of talks uh, coming out from the media quite recently um, about Leon's uh, Moussa, Moussa uh, Dembele. Now, obviously, I think, you know, we inquired about his services um, during uh, the summer uh, transfer window and that. Um, I think Manchester United have been interested in him for quite uh, some time. I think during the summer, you know, he wasn't, we was only tentatively linked to him. You know, like what I mean is, you know, he wasn't one of um, our main uh, priority targets. Obviously, you know, we are seeing Moussa Dembele as an adequate replacement uh, for Romelu Lukaku. Now, I was reading reports Yesterday, it does report the same Man United have made contact uh, with uh, Moussa Dembele's representatives uh, over a potential move for him um, in January. Reportedly, Moussa Dembele feels unsettled uh, with Leon. Uh, this is only his second uh, season uh, with Leon. Um, I think for Leon, um, he's made 41 appearances and scored 21 goals in the League of One. In all competitions, I think he's made just under 60 appearances and scored uh, 28 goals. Um, he is under contract with Leon um, until 2023. He is um, an out and out number nine, so he would. For me, he would be the right calibre player for Manchester United, you know, reflecting what he's done at Leon. He also, before I was at Leon, you know, he had a good couple of years there with Celtic. Uh, during his time with Celtic, I, I think he won two Scottish Premierships. Um, he won two Scottish League Cups and two Scottish Cups. Uh, so he had a good couple of years there with Celtic. Um, obviously, don't forget, he actually began his senior uh, career uh, with Fulham. Uh, did uh, move to uh, Dan Bellini. He was there uh, for quite um, a few uh, years. I think he actually, before I was at Fulham, um, he began, well, he was... Um, I think he was in the youth setup uh, with PSG, but he is um, only uh, 23 uh, years of age. Uh, but maybe we won't go in for him in January because obviously, you know, Leon's asking price, you know, may have put Manchester United off. Reportedly, Leon um, are demanding that the one around £71 million for him. I can't, I don't know if Man United um, are willing to pay that, you know, to be um, quite uh, honest with you. But, you know, Leon did pay around uh, £20 million for him uh, from Celtic uh, last summer. So do you think he would be the right player for Manchester United? You know, do you think he'd be able create them chances that we need do you think he'd be able to score them goals um, that I would do need um but yeah and I think a lot of you know you know um teams were tracking Moussa Dembele you know when he was um he, when he was um Fulham and that um but yeah so he's another he's one of the players who's on our agenda you know who we could uh, go in for um, in January um Obviously, you know, there was reports coming out um, a couple of days ago saying that, you know, reportedly, you know, we're interested in signing the Leicester City duo, uh, James Madison um, and Ben Chirwell. Now, uh, like I mentioned, we inquired them about getting uh, James uh, Madison um, early on in the summer. Um, like I did say, you know, I think James Madison, you know, would be the right calibre player uh, for uh, Manchester United. Um, obviously, James Madison, he's in his second uh, season uh, with Leicester, don't forget. Um, and he's actually, you know, flourishing um, under uh, Brendan Rodgers' uh, guidance. You know, he's predominantly an attacking midfielder is James Madison, but he can also, you know, play out on the left because I think Brendan Rodgers has played him on the left uh, quite um, a few times. Um, he's um, only uh, 22 uh, years of age. Um, 
But yeah, he would be the right player for uh, Manchester United. You know, he'd have creativeness in that midfield. I think, you know, he'd, he'd be the right uh, solution for Man United. Obviously, we are aware that if we are to get James Madison in January or next summer, he's obviously going to cost uh, the club um, a substantial amount, um, like I mentioned. But, you know, we, we're known, you know, for overpaying, overpaying for players in that um, in recent years. So if Leicester are willing to, you know, do any business with James Madison, I think, you know, we'd have to probably pay somewhere in the region of around 70 or 80 million pounds don't forget we did business with Leicester earlier on in the summer obviously because we paid 80 million pounds for Harry Maguire um, obviously you know Harry Maguire um, is the most um, expensive defender um, in the world the second most expensive uh, signing um, at the football club so Leicester are going to demand a similar sort of figure you know to what they did do uh, for Harry uh, Maguire but like I mentioned James Madison has done well so far this season he also did well in his debut season last season in the Premier League you know last season he created uh, more chances than any, than any other player um, in the Premier League I think it was, it was around 100 chances he made um, he's, under, he's still got 4 years left on his current contract with Leicester Leicester did pay around 20 million pounds to him last summer from Norwich because he did have a good couple of years you know uh, with Norwich so he's emulated you know he's emulated very very well um, he also had a loan spell in Scotland with Aberdeen and he actually you know began his uh, career uh, with Coventry uh, did uh, James uh, Madison but I think quite a few teams were also you know tracking him you know when he was um, at Coventry um, the news about Ben Chaywell um Obviously, you know, he got mentioned um, as well. Um, ben Chirwell, I think, is a defender. I think he's actually you know, predominantly um, a left-back, is Ben Chirwell. He's the same age as James Madison. You know, he's also 22 years of age, and I think he's had an impressive uh, start uh, to this season um, as Ben Chirwell. Um um, obviously, you know, I think he's been at Leicester for a number of years now. I think he also had um, a long uh, spell uh, with Huddersfield Town. But yeah, like I mentioned, you know, Leicester have got some good players um, in their team. Um, I think, you know, they could, you know, get her, possibly, you know, get her the top five uh, this season. And there has been games this season, you know, where Leicester, of course, um, have actually, you know, been um, unlucky. But they're two players we could also go in for um, in January. Um, Christian Eriksen, now, obviously, you know, he was a player, you know, we inquired about getting uh, towards uh, the back end um, of the summer transfer window. Now, obviously, we do know for the majority of the summer transfer window that Christian Eriksen, you know, was made, was relentlessly, you know, linked to move uh, to uh, Real Madrid. Um, I think, actually, Christian Eriksen's preference uh, was uh, to make a move uh, to uh, Spain. Um, and obviously, you know, Christian Eriksen's current contract um, expires um, at the end um, of this season. Um, I think Tottenham, you know, could still uh, risk losing him. But if obviously Tottenham were to get rid of him in January, obviously, you know, they could cash in for the play. And I think Tottenham did reveal earlier on in the summer that they wanted a substantial amount. You know, they wanted around, what, £130 million. But then I think, you know, initially then they lowered uh, their asking price. But we did inquire about getting him on deadline. Well, to near, near deadline day in the summer transfer window. And again, I think he would be the right calibre player for Man. Manchester United. I think he is predominantly an attacking midfielder. He's highly experienced in the Premier League. You know, he's what he's around age twenty seven or age or twenty eight. Um, he's made. He's not far away now from making three hundred appearances for Tottenham in all competitions. I think he scored around what nearly seventy goals in two hundred and seventy odd um, appearances. Um, obviously Tottenham paid around was it twelve or eleven twelve million pounds for him from Ajax uh, back in uh, two thousand thirteen. So I think now Christian Eriksen um, is into his uh, seventh first uh, season uh, with Tottenham. Um, so he's another player you know we could go in for in January um, obviously you know Mario Mandzukic obviously you know we've seen him um, as an adequate replacement for Romelu Lukaku um, there's been talks about him going on and you know don't forget we inquired about getting Mario Mandzukic um, in the last um, well in the last couple of days of the window I think it was summer transfer window um, obviously we know that he's a very cheap alternative Mario Mandzukic but I think that to the board have got element of concerns about recommending him in Obviously, you no know, effect on his age because you know Mario Mandzukic is now about thirty-three years of age. So he's, you can practically say he's coming to an end of his uh, football in her career. Um, but yeah, I admire his career because I think Mario Mandzukic had a really, really good career. If Man United were to go in for him in January, you know he probably cost the club from between fifteen uh, to twenty uh, million uh, pounds. And like I did pinpoint pinpoint out at the start of the summer that you know we should orchestrate on you know being sensible over our uh, recruitment because analysing our recruitment policy, you know, it isn't too good to be quite honest. You, but like I did mention. You know, we've spent big in the last, what, six or seven years and always spending big on players and getting them glad to go players, you know, does not, have, of course, um, always, you know, uh, guarantee you uh, success. Um, don't forget, you know, we also inquired about going, we also inquired about Dybala. Again, I think Dybala, you know, would have been the right man for Man United. Um 
Jaden Sancho, you know, could we go in for him in January or could, you know, we'll leave uh, Jaden Sancho um, until uh, next summer. Um, don't forget, you know, we was in for Jaden Sancho earlier on in the summer. Uh, don't forget, you know, we identified Jaden Sancho um, as our number one priority target uh, back in um, January, if you do uh, remember rightly. But obviously, obviously our move got skewered for Jaden Sancho, you know, of our uh, failure to qualify for the Champions League. You know, Jaden Sancho, like I mentioned, would, would fit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's transfer strategy perfectly. You know, he's only 19 years of age. Um, he's predominantly um, a right winner. And like I mentioned, you know, I would be excited about the prospects of Jaden Sancho, you know, playing alongside the likes of Rashford, Daniel James and Martial and that um, in our um, attacking line. Because Jaden Sancho, his runs are good, on, his runs are good on, on and off the ball. You know, he's good at creating chances. He can score goals. It's also beneficial as well because he's had experience of playing in the Premier League because before Jaden Sancho was at Bush U Dortmund, you know, he did serve a couple of years with Man City. Obviously, never got a short first team opportunities at Man City, and this is the main factor reason why I left City to join uh, Borussia Dortmund. But Borussia Dortmund, you know, got him for next to now. You know, he paid they paid around what seven um, or uh, eight uh, million pounds for him. Um, and as soon as he's joined Borussia Dortmund, you know, he actually you know become a um, fruition. And I think his performances for Borussia Dortmund have uh, been uh, really, really good. And obviously, his valuation. Has persistently grown, reflects on his impressive performances. Now, obviously, if we are to go in for him in January or next summer, we are aware that Jaden Sancho is going to cost the club a substantial amount of money. You know, probably we're going to have to pay at least at least in the access end of around um, £100 million. Pounds. But like I mentioned, you know, we have got the financial power, you know, to uh, meet uh, that uh, valuation. Um, but yeah, a very, very good player. Still under contract though with Dortmund um, until uh, 2022. But like I mentioned earlier on in the video, you know, it is good, you know, that we are uh, making uh, plans uh, for uh, the January uh, transfer window. Um, but yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, more signings um, are definitely you now uh, needed um, at the football club. Um, but, you know, like I said, you know, reflecting um, on our uh, bad uh, performances, you know, definitely Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, he's definitely um, accountable uh, for that. Um, you know, I know we've got, you know, quite um, a lot of um, injuries, but, you know, you can't take that into account um, and use that um, as an excuse, really, you know. That's no excuse reflecting them on our uh, bad uh, run of performances. But we do know that, obviously, you know, we've had imperative players out, you know, with injury. Um, obviously, you know, Martial's missed the last, what, six, seven games for Manchester United, you know, due to the thigh injury that he obviously sustained in, in the 2-1 home defeat uh, to Cardiff. So, uh, sorry, to Crystal Palace. So, um, he hasn't uh, played uh, since uh, that game. And we do know that, you know, the um, fluidity he brings in that attacking line, he adds a lot of inspiration in that attacking further the pitch because I thought Anthony Martial, you know, did really, really well in the, them uh, first uh, three uh, games. So he has uh, been um, a big miss. You know, it got confirmed at the start of the season that Anthony Martial um, has been given that number nine shirt. So... I presume he's playing more centrally. But for me, in my opinion, he seems to be more effective in that central position. And, you know, I know he predominantly plays out wide on the left and that, but he's more effective in that uh, central uh, position. And, you know, like I said, you know, Martial, well, I should be back for the game against Liverpool next week. I think the vast majority of our players that are now out of injury should have all, well, the most of them, you know, should have regained full fitness, you know, uh, for the game um, against uh, Liverpool uh, next week. But Anthony Martial, like I mentioned, if he can avoid sustaining any more injuries and he can keep the consistency up, I think he can score a lot of goals for us, you know, uh, this season. And he's still only 23. He's scored over 50 goals for the club um, in all competitions. And like I mentioned, now he's into his fifth season um, as a Manchester United player. Um... Like I said with Luke Shaw, he's missed the last, what, six or seven games for Manchester United. Obviously, you know, due... Um... You know, um, due uh, to um, a hamstring injury. Um... And Luke Shaw's obviously you not know, being um, a big miss, and you know, obviously Luke Shaw um, is our uh, first choice uh, left back. Um, I do know that Luke Shaw's injury prone because obviously, you know, he has sustained uh, quite um, a few injuries um, as a Manchester United player. I think also when he was younger, during his days at Southampton, you know, he did actually you know, sustain uh, quite um, a few um, injuries. But, you know, he's nowhere near to the same sort of extent as our Eric Bay is because I think Eric Bay is a lot more injury prone uh, than Luke Shaw, which I mean is, you know, Eric Bay sustains uh, more um, injuries. But, you know, analysing the majority of Luke Shaw's career, Apart from the injuries and that and his bad spell he had under Mourinho, I think he's been mainly consistent. And, you know, Luke Shaw um, did win the double player this season, last season, reflecting on his uh, impressive performance. He was 
performances but due to his absentee you know there's been quite a few players that have been full full in his role at left back it has been mainly Ashley Young uh, obviously Alex Twanzebe against Arsenal played at, on, at that left back position Brandon Williams played at left back against Altmar uh, obviously Rojo a couple of times has played at, at that left back position so actually you know we have got quite a few uh, versatile uh, defenders uh, which is obviously you know uh, very very um, good uh, but yeah Luke Shaw like I mentioned should be back for the game against uh, Liverpool next week uh, that will be a massive boost for Man United um Obviously, um, Eric Bay, we know he's obviously not going to be one of the players that's going to be back because he's out um, until the new year, or is it until uh, the end of December uh, with a knee injury? Um, and Wamba Saka, as you all know, has been out with illness. He's been out with tonsillitis. He's missed the last two to three games for Manchester United as Am Wamba Saka. He's missed the last two league games and he missed the game against Dama, so he's missed the last three in all competitions. Uh, and obviously, he's another imperative player, and a lot of people believe he's been one of our uh, most uh, consistent signings there uh, so far uh, this season. I do agree on that you know aspect he has you know and I think if he continues uh, that he's good run up of Good run of performances up, I think. You know, his valuation will persistently grow, and I think Anwan Basaka so far this season, you know, he's replicating, you know, what he did last season with Palace. Because don't forget, he only made his senior debut uh, back in uh, February 2018, and I think Basaka, you know, can, you know, emulate. Um, into like Gary Neville I think he can be our fullback over the next uh, decade but for me he's not a liability at all I think he is you know very very uh, reliable I can't think of one bad game you know Pesaka um, has had uh, this season um, but yeah he should be back for Liverpool um, Jesse Lingard you know he definitely really needs to uh, step up to the plate because I think you know he's been very very poor as Jesse Lingard this season and like I mentioned reflecting on his status at the football club you know he should be uh, putting much more uh, better uh, performances out but he came off injured in the 0-0 draw over Altmar in stoppage time but he's, he's, he has been out with a hamstring problem. Um... Obviously, Fossil Mento, I think, still out with injury now. Fossil Mento has been out with injury now for quite uh, some time now. Obviously, he returned to the club early on in the summer. Um, obviously, last season, he was on loan with Fulham, where I think this actual injury now uh, did um, occur. Um, but I think he's close now to regaining full fitness. And um, you've got, um, obviously, Phil Jones. That's obviously not been um, out uh, with injury. Uh, Victor Lindelof um, has been out uh, with a back injury. Um, this is why um, he missed uh, the game against Newcastle. Um, obviously, Alex Tuanzebe, full uh, full. full his role alongside Harold Maguire in that particular game. Um, Victor Lindelof of course um, should be back for Liverpool like I mentioned because obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first choice centre-backs are Lindelof um, and Harry and Maguire and I think for the majority of this season I think they've blended in in that black line you know very very well together. I think Victor Lindelof is flourishing as a Manchester United player even though I think he's had a bad a couple of bad games this season I still think you know that but I think prior to that I think he's mainly uh, done uh, very very well um, as a uh, Victor uh, Lindelof. Lindelof has obviously now made seven odd appearances for the club in all competitions since his arrival from Benfica uh, back in uh, 2017 obviously you know we paid around uh, £30 million pounds, uh, for um, his services or was it £31 million pounds we did uh, pay for him but I think he's done really really well uh, for uh, the football club um, I think it recently said as well that uh, Mason Greenwood um, has uh, been um, out well with a back injury um, but yeah we've got a lot of injuries and And uh, like I um, updated you uh, the other day in regards uh, to uh, Paul Pogba, uh, reportedly, uh, it's well, recent reports have indicated out saying that Paul Pogba, you know, could uh, miss uh, the game um, against uh, Liverpool. Well, it said it was almost certain that he was going to miss uh, the game um, against uh, Liverpool uh, next week uh, due to his um, ongoing uh, foot injury that has actually you know, been surrounding uh, the player for um, a number um, of weeks. You know, he has missed quite um, a few uh, games this season, Paul Pogba, you know, due to injury. He's actually missed the last two for Man United. He actually did play the full 90 minutes against Rochdale and Arsenal, but obviously, you know, didn't uh, look uh, fully um, fit. Uh, so so there's still some reports circulating out saying that you know he could still you know be um, available uh, for the game um, against Liverpool. Obviously he's fighting to uh, regain uh, full uh, fitness because obviously you know we are um, all um, aware of how much um, of a big uh, game you know uh, that's uh, going to be uh, next Sunday um, against uh, Liverpool. Um, <coughs> But yeah, you know, hopefully you now uh, Paul Pobino you know, can be uh, fully uh, fit uh, for uh, that uh, game. Uh, but like I mentioned, you know, we have got a lot of young players in the squad, you know, that are developing and trying to improve um, at Manchester United. And like I mentioned to you, I don't think all the young upcoming players will become a success at the club. I think, you know, I can definitely show Mason Greenwood will be a success at the football club because I think in the games he's played in so far this season, he has actually, you know, uh, been uh, very, very um, impressive.
sorry guys, back about that. Sorry, I just had to go do something. But yeah, um, very, very, um, you know, uh, very, very impressive. And I think Mason Greenwood, you know, can become um, a success um, at Manchester United in that. And he has not yet started a game in the Premier League this season. Um, I think he's made six or two appearances so far um, in the league uh, this season. That, But like I mentioned, by the time he's 23, 24, um, I think he can uh, become um, a, well, I think he can be a world-class centre forward, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. Turned 18 years of age um, at the beginning um, of this month. But yeah, definitely can uh, will be um, a success um, at Manchester United, um, in my um, opinion. Come up with a moment of quality against Rochdale and FC Estania, obviously you now um, early on um, in the season. But I have got some element of concerns about, you know, some of the young upcoming players, maybe, you know, some of them need to be loaned out, you know, maybe because it would be beneficial for their career maybe some of them are not good enough you know to wear represent uh, Manchester United um, like I said I've got some element of concerns about Chong you know he's totally comparison to Mason Greenwood I also believe that Tuan Zebe will become a success at the football club because I think you know the games he's played so far this season he's actually you know uh, been uh, very very um, impressive um, Diego Dallo he'll get more opportunities he's had quite a few injuries though this season as Diego Dallo he's made what played twice this season Um you know, Angel Gomez is another one of our midfield options as well. Um, you know, McTomway, I think he's had a good start to this season. And in regards to McTomway being a long term solution for Man United, you know, I have got element um, concerns about that. You know, I don't know if he can, you know, keep the consistency up. But prior to the Newcastle game, I think McTomway has done, you know, really, really well uh, so far uh, this season. Uh, being very, very impressed with him. Um, and he has uh, deserved uh, to keep um, his place um, in the team. Um, Scott McTomin, where um, still, I think, um, only uh, 22 uh, years of age. Um, my thoughts on Fred. A lot of Man United fans believe he will not become a success at the football club, but I think maybe, you know, the club do need to give Fred, you know, a bit more time. You know, he's only been here since last summer. Manchester United paid just under £50 million for Fred last summer. Um, I do believe we overpaid for the player uh, without um, a shadow of a doubt, but I think we need to uh, give him uh, more of uh, time um, at the football club because there's a couple of games this season where I think he has you know uh, done uh, quite uh, well um but um, yeah, so like I mentioned, you know, we have got um, a lot of uh, young um, upcoming players in the squad. You know, Jimmy Garner, I don't think he's yet made an appearance this season, but I think he did play a couple of times, you know, throughout uh, pre-season. Um, but like I mentioned, you know, we've also got a lot of um, experienced uh, players uh, with that um, in the squad. Um, but like I did say, you know, I just... I just don't think it's going to work out under Solskjaer. And I hate to say that because I do, you know, I love uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer a lot. But like I did mention, you know, Solskjaer can't invoke Alex Ferguson's legacy to save him at Manchester United. And like I mentioned, I think, you know, regardless um, of who our manager is, you know, I don't think anyone, you know, is going to uh, ever, you know, follow um, Alex Ferguson's legacy. You know, we're never going to replicate, you know, what we did under Ferguson. Uh, because, you know, Ferguson was a successful manager. You know, he had 26 years at Man United. You know, he controlled the transfer policy, he controlled the contract. You know, he developed um, a lot of uh, young players and I did say now I hope this team at this day and age can replicate you know what the team uh, did um, under um, Alex Ferguson but obviously we know that's not going to happen and now obviously in this generation you know managers you know don't get the time you know that they would like you know obviously back in the old generation you know managers did get time because obviously the boards were not as ruthless as they are, are uh, now um but Ferguson, you know, they didn't win out um, in his first four years um, at Manchester United. And, you know, he actually was on the verge of getting the sack. Um, but obviously he didn't. And then obviously, you know, look what I um, went um, and accomplished in that. But, you know, Man United have done quite a lot of mistakes. You know, one of the mistakes was obviously, you know, giving Solskjaer the job. I think also a mistake Man United did make was getting rid of Ander Herrera because I think arguably Ander Herrera was one of our best players, you know, uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Herrera. You know, he had five years at Man United. I think four, four and a half. He had four four and a half good years out of the five you know when we was here and I was even more infuriated that we let Ander Herrera go on a free transfer we let him go on a free transfer you know um, and you know we're known for doing that you know we're known for overpaying for players and you know when it comes to letting them go you know we uh, seem to uh, let them uh, go uh, far uh, next to nothing but we've got to recruit a replacement recruit to replace for Ander Herrera um, in January I think you know as well Ferguson made one mistake, you know, and that was recommended David Moyes into the job. Uh, that was only the mistake Ferguson did make. Obviously, you know, uh, David Moyes only lasted, what, 10 months at Manchester United. Um, he's actually, you know, the manager that's had the shortest tenure at the football club, you know, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson since the Alex uh, Ferguson and Rare and that. But that was one mistake Ferguson did. And in my opinion, 
you know, we should have recommended Jose Mourinho in, or something like that after Al the Alex Ferguson era because if we'd, you could arguably say if we'd have got Jose Mourinho in, uh, you know, after Alex Ferguson's retirement, then maybe, you know, it would have been a different scenario with Manchester United because, you know, we did have Jose Mourinho, obviously, you know, before Solskjaer and, you know, I think we recommended him in too late and obviously, you know, Jose Mourinho had two and a half year tenure um, at Manchester United, but I think it's actually worse under the Elegant and Solskjaer era than what it was um, under the Jose Mourinho um, era. Um, obviously, you know, the reasons it didn't work out on the Jose Mourinho is because he had bad disputes with the board. You know, he had bad disputes uh, with the players. Um, obviously, you know, the board weren't back in the signings that he wanted to recommend into the football club last summer. He couldn't really control the transfer strategy and that. So these are the reasons it, did, it didn't work out under Mourinho, despite the fact he won the Europa League and the League Cup in his uh, first uh, season uh, with Manchester United. And like I did mention, you know, this is this is no longer, you know, the Ferguson era now. Like Solskjaer recently spoke about, this is a different era with different players and different groups, you know, that we are uh, building. And it's, you know, it's basically, this is the worst Man United team I've seen in this generation, you know, uh, for um, a lot of uh, years so some people in that aspect you know do have a uh, sympathy you know for um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer but Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Alex Ferguson era and like I did say you know we haven't really got the structure to keep sacking managers even though you know we have already sat to three managers you know since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson era and that but yeah I think you know he, he could I think Solskjaer will go he may not be gone by Christmas but I still think you know he will not uh, last um, at Manchester United um, in my um, opinion and I think if we are obviously to finish out of the top six this season, then I think definitely, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, will end up, you know, uh, leaving uh, the football club. Uh, but, you know, we have got, you know, games coming up thick and fast. Um, you know, we've got Liverpool next week. Then we go, I think, to parties in Belgrade and, you know, the Europa League. Then we go to Norwich away. Then we got go to away, to away to Chelsea at the end of the month in the Cowbell Cup. So we have got, you know, games there coming up uh, thick um, and fast. But, um like I mentioned, you know, the vast majority of our players that are injured should be back for Liverpool, which is good news. With Paul Pogba, there's some reports saying that he's going to, he's, he's fighting to be back. Some reports are saying, you know, that he will not be uh, fit enough and the fitness staff, you know, fear that he could be out um, until uh, the end um, of October um, or, you know, the beginning um, of November and that. Um, but yeah, and like I updated you uh, yesterday, um, in regards uh, to uh, the new uh, director um, of football um, at Manchester United, um, like I did say, for the majority of the summer, you know, we was um, in search uh, for um, a new uh, director um, of football. And I did initially say, you know, that's one of the structural changes that we do uh, need um, at the football club um, is a new uh, director um, of football and that, you know, someone who can oversee our transfer business and that, and someone who would be reliable to oversee our transfer business. And for the majority of the summer, you know, there was quite a few former Man United players is linked with the director's role at the football club. You know, there was talks of Ferdinand, Evra and Darren Fletcher coming in. I think there was also talks about Paul Mitchell coming in and that. But I've been reading recent reports, like I've mentioned to you on my recent videos, saying that, you know, you know, Ed, Edwin van der Sar could return to the club um, as the new uh, sporting air director. I think van der Sar is interested in coming back to the football club because obviously Edwin van der Sar has described Manchester United um, as a fantastic club. Um Obviously, you know, Van der Sar's also got that experience because he's been CEO um, at Ajax, you know, since 2016. Um, obviously, now he's into his fourth uh, season there with Ajax. And I think, you know, we are very, very happy, you know, with the work uh, that he's uh, done um, at Ajax. He has done uh, really, really well. Um, and obviously, you know, I did say it would be beneficial to recommend someone who knows the traditions of the football club, someone, of course, um, who's got that um, experience. And, you know, Van der Sar's got that. And, you know, Van der Sar served six years as a goalkeeper for Manchester United. You know, he won four Premier League titles, you know, was involved in three Champions League finals, you know, with the football club. So I probably know he would be uh, the right uh, candidate, you know, where uh, to come. And you could arguably say if we'd uh, got that direct to the football in during the summer, then maybe in that aspect, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, would have uh, been uh, back to more. Um, but obviously, you know, where uh, we didn't. So, yeah, I think Van der Sar's pinpointed out at some point in his future that he could, you know, uh, make a return uh, back to the uh, football club. This is what, you know, um, he basically um, said. Um... But like I mentioned earlier on the video, you know, I still believe there's more players that do need to lead the football club and that, you know, that are no longer good enough to represent Manchester United, you know. Um... But like I was saying, you know, we have got um, a list um, of managers um, on our agenda, you know, who could replace Solskjaer. Like um, I've mentioned, you know, there has been a lot of talks about Max Allegri going on um, in the last uh, couple of weeks, at least. You know, a lot of reports from the Italian press have been talking a lot about it, saying that, you know, Max Allegri, you know, would like to come to 
manage Manchester United and that. Um, reportedly, he's learning English in preparation for his uh, potential move. And reportedly, Max Allegri did assure that he will take over at Manchester United only if he's to be assured the job uh, will be in uh, the next uh, few uh, weeks. So maybe some Manchester United fans, you know, believe that Max Allegri, you know, would be uh, the right uh, candidate uh, for uh, the football club. Obviously, he has got that managerial experience. You know, he's been managing for just over 16 years now. Because he, be he began his uh, managerial career um, in 2003, uh, did uh, Max um, Allegri. Um, obviously, we know so far he's um, spent the entirety of his career in Italy managing, spent the entirety of his playing career um, in Italy, but he's, he hasn't been managerless for long. You know, he stepped down as Juventus manager early on in the summer. You know, he had five years there uh, with Juventus, um, obviously won four say, five series with them and four Copper Italians. Obviously, got them uh, to two uh, Champions League uh, finals. Um, but yeah, pretty uh, good. Uh, manager of what I've uh, seen um, of his uh, pedigree and that. Um, and I think um, he's um, in his uh, 50s, um, he's Max um, Allegra. Um, but I think he's actually our priority target to replace um, Oligan and Solskjaer. Um, obviously, Pochettino, you know, could the club possibly reignite their interest in him? Because actually, you know, before we, re we did uh, recommend um, Oligan and Solskjaer in, obviously, you know, there was a lot of talks um, about um, Richard Pochettino coming in at that point. But obviously, Solskjaer was our preference because obviously, Solskjaer knows the club inside out and obviously, was a cheaper solution than Pochettino. If we are to go back in for Pochettino, I think we'll probably you know, I have to pay, um, we'll have to probably pay around 32 million in compensation, obviously, you know, to get him um, in there to the football club, even though I don't think he's got a release clause in his contract, you know, Pochettino signed a five-year contract with Tottenham last summer, uh, worth around 8.5 million a year, um, but he's, you know, Pochettino as well, he's highly experienced in the Premier League, the only element of concern I've got about him, he hasn't won out in terms of Suvware, um, he's though good um, at developing uh, young players, um, he's now into his sixth season with Tottenham, he's had five great years with Tottenham. Before I was at Tottenham, I think he had a great short tenure with Southampton and Pochettino actually began his managerial career with Espanyol and he's been managing since 2009 so he's been, you know, he's been in management now for just um, over um, a decade but a lot of Man United fans believe he would be the right candidate. You know, there has been talks about Lauren Blanc, you know, he's a former Man United player. Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of Man United fans, you know, talking about Marcin Wenger coming in. Um, obviously, Arsene Wenger has been manager just now, I think, for like over the year. You know, he stepped down as Arsenal manager last 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 year, last May. Um, obviously, served 22 uh, years there with Arsenal, did Wenger. And analysing his legacy, you know, I thought he had a good... His legacy were good with Arsenal. You know, he had, I think I'd say he had, what, 12, 13 good years out of the 22, you know, when he was there. Um... Well, yeah, you know, I think a lot of Man United fans, you know, believe he he would be the right candidate. There's obviously, you know, been talks um, about uh, Brendan Rodgers. Um, but, yeah, you know, if Solskjaer guys to be sacked, you know, who would you recommend, in, recommend in, you know, to replace him? And obviously, we do know that Man United have spent a hell of a lot of money. You know, I think it has been revealed. Well, I think at an estimated guess, should I say, uh, we've spent around, what, 700-odd, 800-odd million pounds in the last six or seven years in all the managerial arrears. You know, that's just under a billion pounds that the football club have spent. And obviously, you know, that's not taken into account, you know, what was spent um, under Alex Ferguson. Obviously, if you want to take into account what was spent under Ferguson, obviously, you know, it's way over a billion pounds uh, that's uh, been uh, spent um, at the football club. Um and, you know, we've also, you know, got players there on big contracts at Manchester United. Um, like I mentioned, you've got Rashford on, what, nearly 300 grand a week. You've got Martial on 200 grand a week. You've got, you know, um, Jesse Lingard on just over 100 odd grand a week. You've got um, Harry Maguire on 200 odd grand a week. You've got Pogba on just on 300 grand a week. You know, you've got De Gea who's on, what, 375 grand a week. Obviously, De Gea um, is the highest uh, played uh, goalkeeper um, in the world. Um... So, yeah, you know, we have also, you know, got players um, on big uh, contracts. But, um, like I mentioned, um, it's going to be a very, very big game um, against uh, Liverpool uh, next Sunday. You've already seen my, you know, predictions and, you know, my starting level prediction for that game. And we obviously know where my score predictions Um but um yeah, so the main part of this video, you know, was to, you know, give you the update, you know, about, you know, what's going on with Man United and obviously, you know, Moussa Dembele. And I think, you know, the players, you know, Manchester United uh, could go in for um in January. So uh, that's um, about it. Uh, so anyway, guys, drop your comments, like, on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing um, as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.